Well, we hope before the day's over that the sun will come out. You see the history of uh, this rivalry. And that 14-10 win last year by Indiana was uh, a cornerstone in the renaissance of the football program under Bill Mallory at Bloomington. The first Indy win in 20 years a year ago, and uh, Bill brings his team in here today. Each and every one of them will tell you real quick that we still don't think that the people respect us enough and, uh, to do something about that today. Well, if they can, they will go home certainly with a higher margin of respect. Bo Schembechler left Miami of Ohio to come take the job at Michigan, and Bill Mallory succeeded him as the head coach at Miami. So the philosophy of these two men, and they are very close personal friends, very much the same. Kicking game, field position, defense, and run. And run, run, run. And running game. So Janovich will kick it off for white-shirted Indiana, one of the strongest legends in college football, John Colasar and Tony Bowles, two speedsters, are deep. Colasar a wide out, and Bowles a tailback. He hammers that ball back into the end zone with a swirling win and a big hole for Bowles as Tony Bowles comes across the 25 to about the 27-yard line. So the Michigan Wolverines now will go to work. Pretty good field position. It rained yesterday and through much of last night. It has not rained today, but it is still damp down on the rug. And they do play on the artificial surface. Joe Ziegler is in the quarterback position for Indiana, replacing Eric Coleman. Coleman with an ankle problem and just couldn't get it loose enough. Michael Taylor on the first half gives it to Tony Bowles. And Indiana defense, very, very quick. They run to the ball well, and they hold him after a couple of yards. Offensively, Michigan lines up this way. At quarterback, you've got Michael Taylor. Ford is the fullback with Bowles at tailback. The flankers are Colasar and Greg McMurtry. Brown, Doring, Dingman, Vitale, Hussar, and Skrepinak, as Bob mentioned in the opening, Michigan runs to an average of about 288 pounds across the front offensively. From the 29-yard line, second down and eight for Michigan. This time it is the fullback, Leroy Horde, getting the ball. He's a junior out of New Orleans, and Dan Bauer, the nose guard, brings him down. Bauer anchoring the three down people of Harris and Fleurette. The linebackers are Saunders, Bates, Money, and Huff. Huff, very active outside. Secondary, Dumas, Barry, DeWitts, and Bowman, as we told you, not in there. Joe Ziegler is getting the start. And Ziegler is 5'9", 170, is given away height and weight in that secondary cornerback position. Third down now, and three, as Taylor drops the throw. Polisar is wide open on the sideline and has the first down for Michigan at the 45. And he ran off Ziegler on that play. One of the biggest improvements in this Michigan ball club is the play of Michael Taylor, their quarterback. He has come on very strong and, and given some soundness and some consistency to this position. Last year at this time, they had 13 intercepted passes. This year with Taylor at the uh, helm, only two interceptions. So Ziegler gave Polisar the big cushion. And they pick up their first down just over the 45. Michigan Wolverines as they jump out to a 7-0 lead. 
seven to nothing lead. The Wolverines have a perfect homecoming record of 19-0 under Bo Schembechler. Leroy Horde with a 54-yard dart to get Michigan out early, 7 to nothing, And they will now kick off. Rob Turner, a wideout, is the middleman for Indiana, flanked by Darrell Eddings and Markel Granderson. Mike Gillette. Also, one of the outstanding place kickers in the country. Very good athlete. He made the headlines when he ran out of a fake punt and scored a touchdown for the Wolverines. Also, a very good punter. Hammers a line drive that skitters down the field and is picked up by Darrell Eddy. And he works his way back up to around the 30-yard line. For a moment, it appeared the ball might have come loose, but no such thing. Let's go back and take a look at the touchdown. Saunders right here, the linebacker, is going to come up. Now watch Schlereth, 54, is going to come around him. Money is going to take himself out of the play, and watch the fullback is going to come right up in through here. Quick handoff, little game on the weak side. Michigan picks it up very nicely. Horde is off to the races. So Indiana with its first possession now will operate out of the I formation. Dave Snell at quarterback sets him up with two wide outs and gives the ball to Anthony Thompson who will pick up one yard to the 31. Another look. Watch the hole that's created here. Dingman is 78 and Doring is 73. Now 54, Slareth takes himself out of the play. Doring 73 gets a nice block on uh, Saunders. And a nice run. And by a tally, took care of Bauer by himself. The Michigan center took the nose guard right out of the play. That's gonna be a very big matchup today. Snell back to throw on second down and nine. Looks and looks and looks and now throws it away. There was nobody available to him. Snell lining up with the backfield behind him of Anthony Thompson at the tailback position with Cal Miller at fullback. Rob Turner is one wide out and Tony Buford the other. Up front it's Jordan and Jordan catches a lot of balls. Simons, Radke, Fargo, Schrader and Pryor. That's a very good offensive front and they are going to be tested because as Bob mentioned early on the Wolverines will be slanted. Coming at angle more today than they have in any game they played this season. It is third and still 10. Nell's pass is good, and it's good for a first down, and that was a pressure catch at the 44-yard line by Rob Turner. The sophomore was covered very well by David Arnold, but he hauled it in. Defensively, Michigan lines up with three down people of Brent White, T.J. Osman, and Mark Mester. You want to watch number 60 if you want to watch a lineman really work on defense. The linebackers are Marshall, Grant, Milligan, and Abrams. The secondary, Arnold, Welburn, Murray, and Key. So it's first down, Indiana, on a big third down catch by Turner at their own 44. Michigan leading 7 to nothing on Horde's 54-yard run. Now, a little quick pop to the sideline is not good, intended for Anthony Thomas, who had come out of the backfield. What I see at this particular moment, Bob, are the Indiana people coming out, and particularly the wide outs, uh, or the people who are running the short patterns, are coming out and stopping. They're not continuing to move. They're standing around. Well, they have to clear it out, except for that last play where Turner caught for the first down. The wide receivers have to clear it out for the two backs and the tight end. Indiana's going to throw short, and to do that, you have to clear out with your wide receiver. They go to the shotgun on second down and 10 now. Now gives the ball away to Anthony Thompson, and Thompson finds a little bit of room up to about the 49. So that's a four-yard pickup. And Bill Mallory told me yesterday about how he planned to go at the Michigan defense. Well, we're going to go after them. You know, we're not uh, coming in and doing anything different than what we've done. So, you know, our uh, offense is geared to go after you with the run. And uh, again, we're going to mix it up with the pass. So you won't see any difference uh, in us and what we've been in the previous games. 
But in this first defensive possession, he's gone to the pass, I think, sooner than he had to hope not to. Third and six. Snell's pass to the sideline. Turner's over there, and he's got it first down at the Michigan 40. So once again, Snell hits his man on the third down play. And uh, it was expected. And we made a very hard point of it at the very outset that Snell might be the man that would have to step up today and really take charge. Indiana likes to run. In fact, they lead the Big Ten in rushing. Michigan on defense leads the conference in total defense. So you figure that Michigan is going to take away what Indiana does best. That's right. And for Snell, he's been uh, successful so far. This goes to Miller, the fullback. And Cal Miller out of the split back alignment just hammers it off the right side. I think another thing that'll be interesting, and there's another big ball game in the Big Ten with the Spartans and the Illini even now in third quarter at Champaign. Whether or not the Indiana offensive front can continue to hammer on the Michigan defense. We saw when we did the Miami game here, Bob, the Michigan defense people get tired. But the problem with Michigan, they've lost two games and, and have tied one. Is in the fourth quarter they have not played as well. You would think that they do tie. Vince Dooley said that he thought Kentucky was an explosion waiting to happen. Well, it happened. Kentucky Our beat Georgia 16 to 10. Good run there by Thompson. It's still short of the first down. Third down and short coming up. Here's Corey McFerrin from our studio in New York. The Southeastern Conference race is in a scramble. There are now five teams tied with one loss. Kentucky, the upset of the day with this big touchdown run after a Georgia fumble. This made it 13-10 to 10 and a field goal. And the Wildcats beat Georgia by six. get it he's going to be just short of the first down that sounded like Al Crocker <laughs> I was told that it was Corey McFerrin <laughs> I thought I thought Al was going to be in a wire I did too yeah. sorry about that Al well, this is fourth down for uh, Indiana they've uh, made two first downs so far they lead the conference in third down conversion and on fourth down this year. They've made 10 of 11 times they've tried it. So uh, Bill Mallory's ball club will try one more right here. Going after it on fourth and one. And a penalty flag. And a whistle stops it. As Indiana that comes to the ball. Procedure against the Hoosier. Ron Winter is the referee in today's ball game. And one would think that might change Bill Mallory's mind, and on comes the kicking team. Fourth down. Jim Augustine is the umpire. Head linesman is Wayne Meese today. Line judge is Ron Bennington. Field judge John Everett. Side judge Bob Colburn. And the back judge is Tom Herbert. It'll be a 53-yard try by Stoyanovich. His longest of his career is 53 yards. Jim Jordan, the tight end, holds the ball. And it's down at the 43. Wind swirls around. It's a big one. Enough leg. He got it. 53 yards. Stoyanovich, a hammer of a leg. Makes it a 7-3 ball game, Michigan. They do a lot of funny things sometimes at homecoming at different places. Here in Michigan, they have a car bashing contest. And they accumulate monies from this, and it goes to the Chick Evans Scholarship Fund. It looks like my car. <laughs> it's a great way to work out your frustrations, isn't it? Get a little relief down in those books. All right, Stoyanovich puts it on the tee after a 53-yard field goal, which ties his IU career record. And both teams score off the initial possession. He was an outstanding soccer player in high school. In fact, he was All-American for two years. He was, was an outstanding player here in Michigan until this year, Stoyanovich decided to give it up and concentrate on football. Polisar is uh, back there, 40, along with Tony Bowles. Number 42, the tailback. They like Bowles to have the ball, though Polisar is a speed merchant himself. That's a high 
deep scoring kick way back. No return off that one. The quickest crowd in the end for a test back. Well, Janovic has got a strong leg, as you mentioned, and that uh, not being returned, that's 30 of the last 35 kickoffs not been returned past the 20 yard line. And that's a great thing for your defense, Keith. Leroy Horde coming down on the kickoff coverage, shaken up. And it looks like he's had his belt on and uh, he's wobbling around and they're gonna take a little time for him. Uh, he is in no shape to be going out and playing uh, football right now. He's gonna have to come off the field. That'll put Jared Bunch into the lineup. He really groggy. So he has to come out and Bunch goes in. Jared is a junior from Ashtabula, Ohio and he's got a very short shoulder. There's that Michigan offensive front to give you some idea of the Brett. I mean, when Strepanak gets after you, <laughs> it's like uh, building station. 6'8 and 322, Strepanak. All right, first down, Wolverines. They lead 7 to 3 from the 20. Taylor gives it to Bowles. Pursuit this time much better by Indiana. Doug Schlereth, a senior from Biddeford, Maine, made the first hit, number 54 for the Hoosiers. for Michigan. Holes again. Down some room. Ball comes loose as he goes down. Clearly on the ground before the ball came out. And it's just across the 28. Hit by Slareth and Huff. State play because uh, of their seasons. Look at NC State, knocks off Clemson. Nick Sherrick has got things going in Raleigh. That's a considerable upset. Third down and two, they give it a bowl. Tony won't get it. Very good defensive reaction by Brad Money and Jim Sams. Sams is in right now at the nose guard position for Indiana, but it was 53 Money that really laid the hit on him and stopped him cold. Both linebackers were there, both inside linebackers. The line was slanting, and Money got over and made the hit. Bates was also there, but uh, Money with the tackle. All right, first punt today by Mike Gillette. Tony Buford will go back for Indiana. He shows the respect for Gillette. He goes all the way back inside his 30. Gillette's going to hit the ball from around his own 20. Got it out of there, spinning kick, got a little bit of daylight for Buford, but down he goes. Good coverage downfield by number 90 for Michigan, Keith Mitchell, a tight end. A 35-yard punt, loss of two on the attempt to return it. 6.46 to go first quarter, Michigan leading 7-3. Beckler fouling his sidelines as Bill Mallory's Indiana Hoosiers come up for their second possession of the ball game. They trail seven to three here in the first quarter from the 34. First down. Fullback Miller made the move as if he was going to go to Thompson but handed short to Miller and Miller gets about eight yards on the carry. Our reporter from the field today Becky Dixon. Keith, a quick word on the wind conditions here at Michigan Stadium. It is a cold, blustery wind coming in from the northwest, and already the strong wind has come into play here. I just talked to uh, kicker Pete Stoyanovich. He said on his 53-yard field goal, the wind was a factor, but he also said give him some of the credit. Keith. I'll give him all the credit because he's got a hammer for a leg. Gene Boyd is now the fullback for Indiana. They go to Thompson. Thompson up the middle for the first down. Hits the 45 and crosses to the 46. So Indiana, as Bill Mallory said, doing what they have been doing. Hammer at you, drive block, bang, bang, bang. You look at the Indiana offense, they lead the uh, Big Ten in five different categories, including total offense. 
Michigan's defense, as we mentioned, is number one in the Big Ten also. So it's one offense against one defense. First down, Hoosiers. Carlos Marte in his tight end right now. And Snell rolls. Sideline, good. Turner. About a nine-yard pickup on the throw. But so far, Bob Greasy, Dave Schnell has been equal to the challenge. He has. He has thrown some good passes, and it's uh, George Ballou, the offensive coordinator, calling the plays in the press box. And I think it's key for a young quarterback on the road to complete some passes early in the ball game. And Schnell has picked up some critical third downs and has thrown the ball very well. Bob Turner has caught three for 34 yards. And you saw that Michigan State is not ahead of Illinois. Fullback. Dean Boyd, a junior from Zionsville, Indiana, trying for the first down, and he's not going to have it. Notre Dame, number two, shutting down the Air Force wishbone. Duke losing their first last week. Looks like Steve Spurrier's lads may be in trouble this week. Wyoming rolling along undefeated. That's a battle right there for possibly the Southwest Conference title between Arkansas and Houston. It is third and a long yard, close to two. Michigan almost jumped, yeah. did jump, Woo. did jump. They caught the Wolverines in the neutral zone, I do believe. If so, it'll be five yards offside and a first down for Indiana. So Michigan is offside, which makes it first down. Hoosier, yesterday, Bosham Beckler had this comment about his Wolverine defensive team. Well, I've been a little critical of our defense, and uh, after six games, I pick up the stats, and we lead the conference in total defense. Doesn't make sense. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I think that's going to be very important. I don't think we'll shut them down cold. Um, for example, if uh, Thompson runs the ball 30 times, uh, gains 100 yards, I'm not going to get too upset about that. Uh, when he starts to gain over four yards of crack, then I think uh, we've got to start to worry. Ball is at the 40 of Michigan. First down, Indiana. Michigan leading 7-3 on a 54-yard touchdown run in the first possession by Leroy Horde and Benny Thomas. Thompson working over the left side. And A.T. will pick up about three. Very durable back. Tough guy. Strong uh, running back. Lifts over 400 pounds bench presses. He is not does not have great blazing speed, but he has a good uh, good enough uh, quickness and some moves along with his strength to be a very dangerous runner. Second down, seven from the 37 of Michigan. Bell has his tight end wide open, and it's a first down at the 25 of Michigan. Tim Jordan made the catch. play action fake is going to hold the linebackers Jordan 86 is going to get a nice release to slant to the outside and Snell on a semi roll makes it easier to get the ball to him. Michigan covers deep they're a conservative defensive team and that gives that tight end some room it gives the uh, wide receivers room going out also Marte back in there at tight end skips over Thompson Bounces away from the first wave and cannot get back to the line of scrimmage. Very good pursuit by David Arnold, number 15. He got away from Mark Messner, number 60. But it was Messner who forced him wide enough, giving Arnold time to get there. And what happened on that time was the tight end shifted from the right side to the left side. That was Marte. The entire Michigan defense slid over toward the tight end. So they were overstacked toward the tight end. Indiana continued to run that way. And... Uh, Running back did a nice job just to get back uh, to the line of scrimmage. It would have been a very good time for the checkoff and a little misdirection, wouldn't it? Yes, sir. Second down, 11. Thompson up the middle. Just over the 25. So the Michigan plan to slant so far paying dividends. Yes, it is. Uh, it's stuffing them uh, up the middle, and that's what they wanted to do, force uh, Schnell to throw, and he's thrown very well. And he's going to have to air it out right here. Eddie Thomas checks in at a wide out. 
replacing Buford. Thomas is number seven. Turner stays in. Carlos Marte is the tight end. Cal Miller is back in at fullback. Out of the shotgun, Snell drops. Pass is deflected at the line of scrimmage. He had a very good chance at his tight end running a corner pattern, but the ball was slapped down. And in comes Pete again. He kicked a 53-yarder a few minutes ago. Now he's got a chip shot of 42 yards. Jordan, the only tight end I know of in college football who does the holding on place kicks, down on his knee to accept the snap. Kick is away. Missed it. Missed it right. 2.09 to go in the first quarter. Join Larry Bird and the Boston Celtics. They take the court against international competition in the McDonald's Basketball Open, live tomorrow on ABC Sports. This is Al Troutwig in New York. Troy Aikman starting to get things going as UCLA takes on Arizona after a bit of a scramble, a two-yard touchdown run to Danny Thompson. Bruins seven, Arizona nothing in the first. Keith? Thanks, Al. UCLA ranked number one in the country. They get the big shootout next week with Washington State. Cougars, two of the top offensive teams in the country. Some of you are going to be seeing that game. Washington State's playing Arizona State out there today. All right, Michigan taking over at their 25. First down, leading 7-3. Give it to Tony Bowles, the tailback. And Tony will have the better part of four yards as he works his way in the middle. Bowles, 6'1", 190, a junior. He comes from west of Michigan, and he's very quick. Checking in at a wide out for the Michigan Wolverines, Chris Callaway. He's the junior out of Chicago. He's also very quick. Michigan's got very good speed at the wide position. Back to the tailback, Bowles. It's the first stack, and then Joe Huff is right there to put him down. They'll mark him uh, just over the 26-yard line, and here's Becky. Keith, Michigan fullback Leroy Horde was injured on Michigan's last offensive position, possession. He was hit in the head. It's not certain now as to whether or not he will go back in. Right. The crowd today is 106,104. That is the sixth largest crowd in this great big old saucer. That's a lot of folks. Interesting yesterday talking with Bo, he says, he was in, if we get 90,000 in here, we really hurt him. He said, he's talking about not filling this place up. We'll do this every week. Third and nine. Huff after Taylor. Taylor takes off. Penalty flag. I think uh, Michigan's going to get named for holding, I believe, number 70. Three, Tom Doring was holding Huff. That's right. Oh, they wipe out that game. Well, Bo's not happy about penalties. He came into the ball game. The third, third most, the third least penalized team. Look to the left side of your screen. 73 is Doring. 35 is Huff. He pulls him down. If, if you Holding. pull him down now, Huff put himself in that situation where Doring's hand was across his uh, chest. That in itself is not a hold, but when you pull the man down, that is the hold. 73. Yeah, that clearly says you've got a grip, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> but just the fact that his, his arm was across Huff's chest is not holding because Huff put himself in that situation. They call that the arm under. When the defensive man puts his arm under, it puts the offensive man in that situation. Third down and 19 now after the penalty. Well, back at the 16 of Michigan. Bowles in motion. Taylor with a shovel forward to Bunch. Bunch has got a bunch of yards. He's got a first down out at the 36-yard line. the end of the first 
quarter. West Virginia winning big today. So is Florida State. We've got 10 seconds to go in the first period. And Michigan's going to let time run out before they take another step. So we have played 15 minutes at Michigan Stadium, and the Wolverines are leading the Indiana Hoosiers 7-3. Seven to three, Michigan. After one quarter of play, the Wolverines come back to the line of scrimmage, owning the football first down near their own 37-yard line. And Michael Taylor turns and gives to the fullback Jared Bunch, and Bunch hammers in there close to the 40-yard line. Leroy Horde, the starting fullback for Michigan, on the very first possession on this play, bolted 54 yards for a touchdown to give Michigan its seven to nothing lead and then uh, on the kickoff coverage following the touchdown Horde took a bump to the head and is out of the lineup and has not returned. Second down call it seven. This is Bowles with the ball. Money missed him and Bowles gets out here midfield for a first down at the 49 yard line. Brian DeWitt caught him down but Money had him and didn't get him. Came up with nothing but air as Bowles made the move in the first quarter numbers. Stats are pretty, pretty even. There's not much there. The only thing that you might notice is the total plays. Indiana had an 18 plays and Michigan only 10. The key there is turnovers. Neither one of these teams likes to turn the ball over. Of course, no team likes to do that, but these two teams really talk about it a lot. McMurtry and Callaway wide. Jeff Brown is the tight end for Michigan on first down. Holds the tail back to the ball into the stack. Well, somehow he bounced off that stack and found some wiggling room and got down to about the 44 of Indiana. Tomorrow, ABC Sports will have the oldest international horse race in the United States, the Turf Classic. Top horses all over the world, including France, Soviet Union, England, Ireland, and the U.S. in the Budweiser International, beginning at 2.30 Eastern Time, 1.30 Central and Pacific. And then the Boston Celtics will be in Spain in the McDonald's Basketball Open, playing Real Madrid. This is Bunch. He's having a big day, too, so the Michigan fullback looks like they might be in for a busy afternoon. First down, Wolverines at the Indiana 35. But that big offensive line that is really doing a job on Indiana right now, as we told you, they're weighing 288 on the average. Huzar was on that side, 74, and Shkrepinek doing a nice job up front for Michigan. Bunch, number 32, started the season at that position. There's a penalty flag. And uh, Hort uh, finally got the call at the spot. And now Bunch is back in there having a big day. It's holding against Michigan, and that is the second holding call. Tim Becker is really upset at the amount of penalties that have been called on his ball club in the last couple of weeks. As I mentioned, overall this season, they're the third least penalized team in the Big Ten, but the last two weeks, or two weeks ago at Michigan State, 93 yards in penalties. Last week, 82 yards at Iowa, and they're starting off very poorly as far as penalties are concerned here again today. 13.05 to go in the first half. Michigan leading 7-3. Derek Walker is now the tight end for the Wolverines. Polisar to the top of the picture. McMurtry to the bottom. And Bowles with the ball. And number 91 steps in there. Jim Sam. And he takes on Bowles. Brings him down. Sam didn't start the ball game today, but Joe Novak, the defensive coordinator for the Hoosiers, because he's probably our best defensive lineman. He's had some injury problems this year, just getting back into shape. Uh, but he's definitely our quickest defensive lineman. He plays nose tackle and around John Vitale that time. Second down and still about 20. Ball just over the Indiana 45. Oh, 
Baylor to throw. Good protection. Ball ricochets off the hand. Coach get the downfield. Indiana can't get a handle on it. Tony Bowles was the intended receiver. Number 21, Mark Ferry. Pursuit of the ball. Couldn't quite get to it. The Bowles went down about 10 yards and made a move to the outside and then went straight up the field and money 53. They have uh, saved their long completion. The Bowles was open in between the linebackers and the defensive backs. Indiana making defensive changes now. They may have 12 people. They burn some Chapman. Taylor trying to get away with the down. Back on the 49-yard line. There was nothing available downfield, and I think Indiana did have 12 people on the field. They made some defensive substitutions, and they, they sent two in and one went out. I think they got away with one. <laughs> sent more than that. Looked like they sent four in. Maybe only three went out, but anyway. I think the officials have uh, have counted correctly or counted the problem. Bo's out on the field. He's really yelling about it. Oh, they did catch him. <laughs> I never did see a flag, but I said there's one down there in the corner. <laughs> well, I saw two come in, but only saw yeah. one go out. Yeah. <laughs> Illegal participation on the defense. 12 men on the field. Third down. That's a key play, too. Indiana had shut down Michigan. It was a, it was a time for Michigan to kick the ball over, so it was a possession. Big foul. mistake. Possession foul. Get the, Michigan keeps the football. Third down and four, actually. After the penalty. Taylor back. Pass is caught by McMurtry down at the 14 yard line. Caught that ball in front of Brian DeWitt. McMurtry, number one, is an outstanding football player. A lot of speed. Here he is down here at the bottom. He's just going to go down and run a curl. Look at all the receivers over here. He's trying to get them thinking the other way, and he's going to throw the ball to the right side to McMurtry. Looks to his left. It's a curl pattern. First down. Double tied in now for Michigan. Taylor cuts it. A good yardage out of it. Gets down about the six. Michael Taylor is an outstanding option quarterback out of high school, and he's still got the move. There's no outstanding players on this Indiana defense. There's a bunch of uh, hard workers, but Huff, number 35, to the left right there, was a walk-on five years ago. If there's one guy that can make big plays, it's Joe Huff. Twelfth play in this Michigan possession. Second down. Two for a first down, just outside the six of Indiana. Oh, and it looks like he'll have the first down. Joe Huff again on the tackle for the Hoosiers, number 35. First and goal. Two teams with unblemished conference records starting play today. One was Indiana, the other Illinois. Illinois was behind Michigan State a little while ago, 21 to 14. Michigan goes to the wishbone now with Ford and Bunch. Ford coming back into the game. Leroy winds up at the left halfback spot in the wishbone alignment. They give it instead up front to Bunch. Bunch bangs his way down to the one before they can stop his momentum. Jaron Bunch is the bigger of the two fullbacks. He weighs 240. So Bill Mallory now facing a little on the sidelines, realizing his team is dangerously close to going down 14 to 3. Here's where the bulk of the offensive front means so much. Side 
Bowles drops the ball. Indiana's got it. Can't run it. They've got it. Joe Ziegler. And, well, you know, I'm sitting here. They're down on the one-yard line. They got all of that beef, 288 pounds, and for the living life of me, I don't understand why in the world they would run a wide play. Well, you got my vote on that. You got a lot of power up front. I don't know why you're going to pitch the ball on a tough pitch like this down near the goal line. The second down, just run it in. You know, you've got that much power up front of you. That's a big turnover. Good play for Indiana. So Bill Mallory has got to say thank you very much. We will take it. Al Troutwig in New York. Illinois' tie with Indiana in the Big Ten is in jeopardy as Michigan State comes alive. Blake Ezor, this time on a six-yard touchdown, his second of the day and of the season. State leads Illinois 28-14 in the fourth. Michigan had the ball for 14 plays in that possession. Used up seven minutes and 43 seconds of time. And didn't throw it away. Well, it's not pretty when you get down to the one yard line, you just pound it away. But it's a smart and safe thing to do because if you pitch it down there and lose it, so you're taking more of a chance than if you hand it to somebody. Indiana's ball at their own seven. Anthony Thompson breaks it outside and breaks it big and gets a first down all the way out of the 28 yard line. 21 yards. Big play for Indiana. Now they, they were looking at going down. 64 is Ratke who pulls and blocks out on key the corner. Indiana was looking at going down 14 to 3. They get the ball and they get a big first down. They get out of the hole. Big turnaround for the Hoosiers. Boyd is in a fullback for the Hoosiers. Spell the throw on first down. Gets the pressure, gets it off. Pass is caught by Anthony Thompson. Thompson is down at the 36, brought down by J.J. Grant. I mean, you want to puff up somebody's balloon in a hurry. That's the way to do it, isn't it? Well, what we said at the opening was that this was a young Michigan team going against a veteran Hoosier team. And the thing that we said that they had to avoid mistakes and turning the ball over. They turned it over on the one lot yard line last week in the final minute to lose at Iowa. And they turned it over here in the first half against Indiana. Here the 36. Miller back in at fullback and Miller has the ball. And Miller has the first down for Indiana at the 40. UCLA second quarter 14 nothing that games in Tucson against the Arizona Wildcats. And next week some of you will be watching UCLA and Washington State from the Rose Bowl. Others will see Iowa at Indiana. Right now, the Hoosiers have their hands full with the Michigan Wolverines, trailing seven to three, eight minutes to go in the first half. First down at the 40. Snell. Got a little room. This is something Jim Beckler worried about, letting Snell get loose. Dives for the marker, and he's there. And it hurts like a first down. He's hurt. Is down on the sideline. Hurt down. Yeah, he came down a little uh, differently than he expected. And just as he was coming down after he jumped, I think he he hit somebody, the defensive man, and came down a little bit different than he was expecting. The way he landed, it could mean the wind is knocked out of him. Yeah, it. exactly. It looked like he almost hit flat of his back. And normally when you're Come crashing down with that velocity on your back. It's going to knock the air out of you. I watch your jumps right here. Yeah, that's got to be his back or, or his left shoulder. I'd say it's just the wind knocked out of him. Yep. So we've got a timeout at 7.52 to go in the first half. Well, they pumped him up. Looks like Dave's walking around. And it's going to be all right, but he has to come out for one play, which puts Tom Bolliard in. And 
I would think on a cold, windy day like this, you'd be as careful as you could. It's no fun when you're coming in there as a backup. I understand the birthday guy came by your house this week. <laughs> he did. <laughs> Got hold of you, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> you should have seen the flowers at Greasy Center. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to save him. <laughs> there weren't much to talk about when you got him. <laughs> <laughs> Balliard is the punter. Pretty good athlete. Senior class. Junior eligibility, however. One of the top punters in the country. He's a good athlete. Give it to Thompson. That's pretty safe. And Thompson goes over the behind the right guard. Then we'll get a yard on the play. Ballard started out at, uh, as you take a look at Snell coming back in, Ballard started out at uh, Ohio State and then uh, went out to uh, Oklahoma or Junior College and led them uh, the Junior College to the uh, Junior College Championship last year, was an All-American punter and came to Indiana as a backup quarterback and uh, Snell is back in there. Anthony Thompson now, for the record, has gone over 1,000 yards in this game. He has 1,003 all the season. Second down and nine, Snell back in. To the sideline, little short. And Rob Turner could not reach low enough on the run to pull it in. So it's an incomplete pass. It's going to take Snell, maybe a player, to get his uh, get his feeling back. You know, he took a pretty good shot, got the wind knocked out of him, and uh, probably after that pass, he's going to be uh, be all right. But it takes a little bit when you get an injury like that. Thomas in, Buford out. Wide out. Passing game. Uh, Turner has been the dominant factor so far today. He's been the only wide out they've thrown the ball to. Thomas is a burner. Snell gets it off. Pass is caught underneath by Anthony Thompson. Eric Anderson, inside linebacker, dropping off a sophomore from Glenview and makes the stop. Look at Northwestern. That'll make our director Larry Cam happy. We've got a Michigan man hurt on the sideline. That'll be David Key. David Key is the quarterback on the strong side. That'll be a tough loss if he's hurt. If they start fiddling around with those legs and ankles, you know that could be serious. Virginia won today. George Welch, ball club. Mandy, what's the ground? Tennessee, could it be that they're going to win a game today? They're playing Memphis State in Memphis and leading. Game's underway out west as well, and here comes Key now, walking gingerly off the field. Key is to the left of your screen, being blocked there. Almost a clip. He's hit by his own man, it looks like. I don't know if he got his ankle off the ground or not. But maybe it's a hip, or he just got hit by his own man. It looked like he got clipped by Jordan, number 86, to begin with. It is fourth down. Colasar is the deep man for Michigan. Balliard is in the punt. Remember, he's a quarterback now. 6.56 to play in the first half. It's fourth and about three. And they punt. High, high hanger. Oh, what a kick. Out of bounds inside the five. You got a flag back up field. on Michigan it'd be a first down and Bo knows it. That's a key a penalty again the penalties have been haunting him the last couple of weeks. This will be like a turnover just to give the ball back to Indiana. Oh, 
nothing. On the defense. Whole scrimmage kick enforcement. Whole scrimmage. First down. Okay, it was after the yeah, it was uh, after kick. Okay. Bo's not up, quite as upset as he would have been. Then <laughs> <laughs> uh, it happened prior to the kick. Indiana would be sitting uh, down around the 32-yard uh, line with the first down. Well, still, Indiana's got to be pleased with that that, that series, uh, that possession, because they got the ball on the turnover by Michigan inside the five-yard line, moved it down maybe 60 yards, and then punted it. Now they have Michigan backed up inside their own four-yard line. Ball is at the two. Timeout for the moment. Becky Dixon. Keith, an update on Michigan quarterback David Key. He slightly twisted his ankle. They taped it up for extra support on the sideline. He will be going back in. Right now, you have a little situation here where you would say normally the pressure is on the Michigan offense. Well, sure, it's on the Michigan offense, but from the Indiana perspective, the pressure is on their defensive people to keep Michigan bottled up so the offense can have a decent field position for an next possession. At 6.39 to play in the first half, and Michigan leading 7-3. So well, let's see if the Hoosiers can hold them. You are right there, though I almost a face mask as uh, Tony Bowles went down but I don't see a flag. He'll have a yard just over the three. It'll be second down and nine. There's one thing that Michigan does offensively is that they have got strong formation tendencies. That means when a defensive team like Indiana looks at all their game film offensively they like to run certain plays in certain formations. That's not good offensively. Holds again to about the six. So it'll be third down and six. Behind Michael Taylor. Bold. Found the crack outside, but still he is short of the first down. He got across the 10 to the 11, and Willie Bates finally hunted him down. Not a big first down. Well, they didn't make it. No, didn't get no, close. Yard short. Well, it's a big possession for Indiana to stop them. But defensively, Michigan's uh, offense ranked number three coming in, and uh, Indiana's defense ranked number four. So it's a big series for the Hoosiers defense. All right, Gillette standing in his end zone. will hit it around the two or the three, and Buford is back waiting for the Hoosiers. Standing way back at his 40. Comes up to the 45, and here he comes. Belton. Abrams, an outside linebacker running full tilt, clobbered him at the 44. It was 1979 that this Indiana Michigan series provided a most dramatic finish. Time running out, game tied 21. John Wangler to Lawrence Reed, who then threw to stop the clock to Indiana coach Lee Corso. Six seconds to play. Wangler loaded up on the last play. Get Anthony Carter, 45 yards. Michigan won at 27-21, and Lee Corso is still yelling for his fair catch. All right, with 4.33 to play in the first half, Indiana owns the ball at the Michigan 44. Michigan leads 7-3, and David Key is back in at the cornerback position at the ankle re -wrap. Now. Looks for the pass. Got it. That's Rob Turner. And first down at the Michigan 22. Rick Welburn and David Arnold were defending. And 
Turner got it right between them, and Snell was on the mark. You got to be impressed too with the play calling. Best field position that Indiana has had all day on the Michigan side of the 50-yard line. First down, play a pass for a running team. Receiver was wide open. 7-11, 84 yards for Snell in passing. Fullback Miller. And he has his legs taken from him by Mike Teeter, but will get two yards on the carry. Mark Mesner, number 60. See how the uh, top of your screen slants to the inside. As we told you that the uh, Michigan Wolverines are going to be slanting. He didn't make the play, but Teeter, number 91, did get there. When you slant, the, off the defensive linemen kind of give themselves up to let the linebackers make the play. Make it a one-yard pickup, second and nine. Snell keeps it. As he turns back looking for some daylight, he finds Trip Wilbur, number three, who then turns him right into J.J. Grant, and down he goes. And Snell gets up a bit limpingly himself. Uh -huh. Ball is near the 17 of Michigan, and Indiana will spend the timeout at 3.15 to go in the first half. Seven to three. Indiana has, in each of its possessions, moved the ball to the Michigan side of the field. You know, this is their deepest penetration. They only have three points. And this drive is really a continuation of the drive where they took over inside their own five-yard line. That's right. They got stalled. They punted it. Let Michigan run three. Michigan punted it back. They got great field position inside the 50, and now they're on a continuation. Bolliard is in the ball game. Snell had to come out. He twisted that ankle. Got up very gingerly, and they had to take him out. So Bolliard is in there at quarterback on third and five for the Hoosiers. Old quarterback going to throw it. Holding call going to come up here, I bet you, against Indiana as Pollard runs the ball close to a first down. Hold on. Here comes the official. Holding Indiana. That's a costly penalty for Bill Mallory's team. They came in the least penalized team in the Big Ten, and that takes him out of a first down. Take a look at it. Teeter 91. That's Fargo, the center. There he is. He's got his left arm hooked around him, and he pulls him right down. It's a nice call by the umpire. Sometimes we give too much discredit to these officials, but that was a, clearly a good call. And so the ball comes back outside the 27th. And it'll be third down and 15. Third down. Snell must have sprained that ankle on that option play. Yeah, I think he did. Got up very gingerly. Bolliard stays in on third and long. They're after him. He gets it off, and it is incomplete. And Wilburn comes up to slap it away from 34, Cal Miller. New quarterback comes into the ball game in Michigan. Does they're in a nickel defense. These four plus the strong safety. The strong safety is going to blitz. This man's going to cover for him, and it gives a little bit different read to Bolliard, who just came in the ball game. Michigan disguising coverage is very well. Coverage is there, and the pressure is there. So oh, Stojanovic is in the ball game, and Pete will try this one from 45. He hit one from 53, going the other way. Missed from 42, going the other way. Now this one from uh, 43, 45. A lot of leg, a ton of leg, and it's good. Woo. I mean, that was a howitzer. And it's seven to six, Michigan by one. ABC's College Football is brought to you by the Heartbeat of America. Today, Chevrolet. Homecoming weekend at the University of Michigan. Their team leads 7-6 with 2.42 to go. 
Trojanovic accounting for Indiana scoring on 53 and 45 yard field goals. Michigan scoring coming on a 54 yard run by Leroy Ford. Dave Snell is walking around on the sideline. You see what the disposition is with him. But I sense, yeah, I'm, I know it's done, I couldn't be saying this probably, but you almost have the sense that Indiana is beginning to take a little bit of grip on things, don't you? Well, Michigan's not out of it by any stretch no, of imagination, but it on the road, the visiting team, the longer they can stay in it, I get that same feeling. Tony Bowles, blazing speed back across the 30 on a short kickoff, and gets it out around the 32. Well, our Monday Night Football presentation here on ABC is a good one. Next Monday night, the San Francisco 49ers and the Chicago Bears. Know anything at all about football? You know that's going to be a whale of a ball game. There's Snell. Now they're working on it. That's not his ankle. No. Nope. Bruce tailbone is what we are told. What, what happens there? Your back tightens up. Yep. Your lower back. Yep. And, uh, it hurts. Yeah. Woof, it hurts. All right, Horde is back in there now in the backfield with Bowles and Michael Taylor on first down. Takes off. Got a block on the corner and goes for a first down. Goes to it. Penalty flag trails the play back at the 34. They've handled bowls pretty well today, but it's the other folks have been pairing them up. The fullbacks and Taylor. Well, that happens a lot when you key on one player, a tailback, and decide to stop him. The other guy will get you. A clip, Michigan. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Well, he lets you know what he's feeling, doesn't he? Oh, yeah, no secrets. <laughs> yeah, no secrets. Two and a half minutes to go in the first half. Clipping. Offense. Repeat first down. There have been some surprises today around the country. And Al Trotwick will bring you up to date at halftime. Now Michigan backs up inside the 20. You know, aside from that one long run by Leroy Horde, the Hoosiers' defense has really played, played very well. Yep. And as you mentioned, you, you feel that you sense a grip that the Hoosiers are really getting on to this, this game. Well, they should. I mean, they're seniors. They're a veteran group, and they should be able to play away from home. I think back to the uh, road game last year that this same Hoosiers team played against the Michigan State uh, team for the Big Ten Championship and lost that game. That is experience that they're drawing on to here today. Taylor looks up into the bright sun and throws behind Tony Bowles incomplete forward pass. That sun is coming at an angle over the corner of the stadium. Very bright popping out of the gray sky occasionally. And Taylor was looking right into it. Long shadows when you look toward their sideline. The Michigan looks toward their sideline. Great for the receiver looking back, but for the quarterback, it's tough to see. Okay. It'll be second down and 23. Snell now is on his way to the locker room. He may have a problem. Taylor again to throw. Gets it off down the middle, and it is incomplete. Almost picked off by Mark Ferry, number 21, intended for Tony Bowles. Really been playing well of late. He's a the fifth year senior who walked on originally. Almost had an interception. Had one two weeks ago at home against Ohio State. He was almost benched before that ball game. Had not been playing well, but the last two ball games he has really turned it on, playing very well. 205. Third down and 23. Huff, little shovel pass, gets the ball into the hands of Horde, and Horde is out to about the 29. And Huff came in under a full head of steam and level Taylor just as Michael released the ball. This is unfair for Taylor because they run it this way because they know Huff will take himself out of the play. Now watch 35 Huff. Taylor is the guy that's responsible for Huff. He does a nice job of taking him out of the play. Nobody has to block him. But Michael Taylor says, hey, I don't want to run that play too often. 
Indiana now spending a time out. They have one remaining at 156 to go in the first half. And Michigan on fourth down has Gillette in the ball game. So the Hoosiers saving some time with the timeout. We'll get the ball back, and Bollard is going to be the quarterback. Huff is really the leader of that uh, defense. He has really made plays all year long. He leads in sacks. He leads in tackles for losses. They tell me he has a 41-inch vertical jump. I've never heard of a, of a linebacker with a 41-inch vertical jump. All right, Gillette, ready to punt it. Newford back. Mike punt earlier today. Two of them were 35 and 44. They have been low line drives, too, both of them. Pressure. Who's just come that he gets off a high hanger this time and forces Buford into a fair catch up around his 36 37. It's a 35 yard punt, but it's a very effective punt in that it forced Buford to call the fair catch. Well, they had a punt block on, too. There was 10 men rushing and nobody back to help them, uh, block for Buford. They almost blocked that kick. Yeah, close. Now in the clubhouse, Becky Dixon has the story. All right, thank you very much, Keith. I just talked to the Indiana doctors. They say they will examine Chanel at halftime. He is in a lot of pain with that bruised tailbone, and they'll make a determination as to what to do in the second half at halftime. Thank you. From the 35 now, Bollard brings him up. 148 remaining to play in the first half. 7-6, Michigan. This is Thompson. Goes to the boundary side and gets decent yardage out of it. About all you can do for a bruised tailbone is put a little hot pack on it at halftime, put some analgesic on it. Take, a, take an aspirin. A couple two. of aspirin. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. Lay try down. To, try to go. A look at Indiana's first half possessions. Started uh, on side of the uh, 50 every time except the once when they got on the 44 yard line of Michigan and got a field goal. Second and seven. <laughs> Bolliard has good protection, is on the money to Thompson. Thompson gets away and gets the first down out of it. Up across the 45. So that's a good effort by Anthony Thompson. Thompson came into the ball game with 12 receptions, so he does catch the ball and catch it well coming out of the backfield. I think it's a good way to use him, too, because you know they're keying on him on the run, so send him out in the pass pattern. Yeah, he's tough one on one. All your pass. Thrown low. Thompson couldn't catch it. And again, the sun, I think, probably is a factor that uh, he had to look back into the bright sun and didn't get it. Two, but they haven't flipped over the mountain. Okay. 45-yard line. Let's see if he goes a little deeper with his pass this time. Nope, stays underneath with it, and again. The ball is low, and again, the ball is dropped by Anthony Pump. So, <laughs> it's having his troubles on the last two. Yeah, well, Bollier, too, is... is is in there. He didn't got a shot put to that play. Ball, yeah, he's right. He's not turning it loose. He doesn't want to turn the ball over to Michigan, and he knows they're dropping back in zones. The only thing is open is short. He's throwing the right thing. He just needs to go ahead and throw it. He's sort of pushing it. He's got to wing it. But again, he, he is a fine quarterback, and uh, he can play the game. So it's third now and ten. Intended for Thompson and is overthrown. As Anthony was trying to get in between them, dropping behind the linebacker and in front of the corner, but it doesn't work. And so the Hoosiers now, with 118, are in punt formation. Well, a little bit of an anticlimactic moment there in that the Hoosiers uh, starting quarterback Snell has a uh, bruised tailbone and is out of it. 
Time out on the field, and here's a look at the Hoosiers' home. The entire Michigan team falls to the sidelines for a conference. Indiana's on the other side of the field. Bill Mallory there. All your descend to punt. Averaging better than 45 yards per kick. And he gets it very high. 30. John Collistar. But he's been pressed into hurried duty in relief of an injured Dave Schnell. Quarterback position. He almost blocked one earlier. Let's see if they go after it again. They got 10 up there. Penalty flag. They might have started too soon. That's a good kick. Oh, oh, it is a great kick. A spectacular kick. Coffin's corner. Marked out inside the one. 54 yard punt. It's going to come back. It looks like. It's what a spectacular fun. Was well, this is Ballard's first year at, at Indiana. Started off at Ohio State, as I mentioned. His father was an all illegal procedure, offense, repeat fourth down. His father was all Big Ten basketball player. Bayard went to a Northeast Oklahoma Junior College, where he led him to the uh, Junior College National Championship last year as a quarterback and made the uh, All American team as a punter. So he can play. Now he's got to try to do it again. Again, Michigan comes, and again, they get pressure, and again, it's a very good kick. High, high kick, and a fair catch by Colasar back at the Michigan 15-yard line. So it's a 45-yard effort that time with no return. And the Wolverines now with two timeouts remaining and a minute and two on the clock, leading seven to six. Stars out there on the field all by himself while the rest of the offensive unit gets final instructions from both. And here we go. Well, if there's a gimmick in the book for this particular game, I think we're discontent right now at just burning out the last minute, uh, being back up in their own territory and going into halftime ahead 7 6. Michigan State beat Illinois today. Holds with the ball, just tucks it away, wraps both arms around it, and runs it out to about the 22 yard line. Pick up the seven, and the clock is now running. So, Indiana and Illinois, the two teams with uh, clean conference records, one has fallen. And coming up to halftime here in Ann Arbor, the other one is trailing by a point. With a half to go. Taylor wanted to load it up and let it fly, but couldn't find anybody, and so he takes off and goes out of bounds. Out of the 27, and that'll be good for a first down. Taylor leads the Big Ten in passing efficiency. A little bit strange for a Michigan team, you would say, because aside from the Harbaugh a few years back, they have not had a quarterback to really come in and take over. Demetrius Brown was a quarterback last year and had some problems with interceptions. Michael Taylor had the opportunity this year and has really brought some consistency to this uh, offensive team. That's exactly what they needed. Yeah, they might not have two losses. He's been there for the more season. This is Bowles. No place for Tony to go. That ought to be the last play of the uh, half unless Michigan wants to spend the time out. They stop it with 10 seconds and charge a timeout to uh, the Michigan Wolverines. That leaves them one with 10 seconds. Time for one play. 
Washington State UCLA out of the Pac-10 next week for some of you. And Iowa Indiana or the rest of you starts at 3.30 Eastern time next Saturday here on ABC Sports. And Indiana is really going into the crunch time of their schedule as you mentioned at the beginning of the uh, telecast. Michigan here today Iowa next week. They got Illinois. The uh, easy part of their uh, schedule out of the way in the first six games. 28 14, the final over in Champaign today at the Tokyo. So the Illini get their first conference loss. I asked Paul about Michael Taylor. He said, I said what, what, what does he do, do best? What is his best attribute? He says it's his intelligence. He's extremely smart. In fact, he was an academic All American in high school. Holding up the field. That's up to the 37. And time has run out. And so at halftime, the Michigan Wolverines lead the Indiana Hoosiers by a score of 7 to 6. Early touchdown on the first possession and two Indiana field goals accounting for that scoring. Bob, first let us run the two highlights uh, of this ball game, other than the 53 and 45 yard field goals by Stoyanovich of uh, Indiana. But here's the way Michigan got its touchdown in its very first possession of the ball game. Leroy Horde finds a crack and goes 54 yards for the touchdown. Early in the ball game, and I think Ziegler coming from the bottom, number 16, starting in place of Coleman, should have made the tackle and didn't, and Horde took advantage of it. Michigan gets a early touchdown from a man they didn't think would be doing more than just blocking for a, a bowl. As a matter of fact, Indiana has handled Tony Bowles pretty well in the first half, but the Michigan fullbacks are one of big yardage. But here, in my judgment, is the key play of the ball game. We're on second down and goal with that huge offensive front. Michigan runs this little pitch outside. Bowles loses the ball, and Ziegler comes up with it for Indiana. It could have been 14 to 3 at that point. Travel a yard's all they had to do, but they didn't. They turned it over, and uh, since that time, Indiana sort of taken control of the ball game. Well, I agree with you that that was the turning point. It could have been 14-3. Now it's 7-6. Uh, on the goal line, you don't do anything fancy. You don't toss the ball unless you have to. If you can't run it in a boring, straight-ahead, over-the-top play, then you can do those fancy things like the wishbone and tossing it and all that other stuff. That was not a good play for Michigan. They turned it over last week in the last minute against Iowa to a, for a tie that they didn't win. And we said coming on the ball game today that they're very young and the thing they had to do was avoid making mistakes and they have not, do, they have not done that. There is bad news, however, for Indiana. Before the half, David Schnell suffered a bruised tailbone. Doctors examined him at halftime and we'll just have to wait and see whether or not he's able to come back and play in the second half, the starting quarterback. So that means if Schnell can't play, then a considerable burden falls on Bolliard and the kicking game for Indiana. Dave Schnell is out running around, loosening up. He has bruised tailbone. That can cause muscle spasms and tightening in the back. So he's doing everything he can to stay loose after probably getting a very uh, warm rub down and examination from the doctors in the clubhouse. It is a tricky little injury. It is probably not a particularly serious injury. But here, as you look at the stats, I want to make one further point on the Indiana quarterback situation. They only have two. They don't have a third quarterback. So Bolliard, if he should go down and Schnell can't play, they'd really be in a fix. Halftime statistics, uh, the thing that jumps out at you is that one turnover we talked about for Michigan where they fumbled inside their own two-yard line. Total plays, everything else is about the same. Indiana not being able to rush the football very well. Normally, normally uh, Thompson has at least that many yards in the first half himself. Now let's join Becky Dixon. Keith, you're now looking at the president's box here at Michigan Stadium, and as you can see, there's a big crowd on hand today. And with me right now is the new president here at the University of Michigan, Dr. James Duderstadt. Dr. Duderstadt, you just took office in September. How have things been going? Any surprises so far? Well, I've been surprised by how nerve-wracking football is in the Big Ten this year. So uh, I think perhaps the most surprising thing is how 
deeply people care about universities like this, not just students and their families, but people throughout the state and the nation. What specifically would you like to accomplish here at the University of Michigan in the coming year? I'd really like to prepare this university really to face America the 21st century, to educate the students that will be citizens of that country at that time and to serve that country, to serve it as universities must. All right, thank you very much and good luck in those goals. You have a great view up here, by the way. <laughs> Keith? <laughs> Warm, too, is it, Becky? All right, on a chilly autumn afternoon, here we go with the second half. Michigan will kick it off, and we'll see if Schnell answers the call. It's back at the four for Darrell Edding, and the Hoosiers going to get pretty good field position as Darrell comes back up to the 29-yard line. Lance Dutton brings him down, and there's number 11 talking to his coach, and he's coming. Seven to six, one-point lead for Michigan. You know, Keith, you mentioned that they only brought two quarterbacks. Well, their free safety, uh, Brian DeWitts, who is a fifth-year senior, used to play quarterback. In fact, he started five games in 1986, and he may be their emergency third-string quarterback should they need one. Right now, Dave Schnell is out there to see how far he can go with Thompson and Boyd lined up behind him. First down at their own 29. Thompson. Hit in the backfield, number 60, Mark Messner was in there and got a piece of him to slow him down. J.J. Grant put him away. Let's take a look at the Indiana first half possessions. They had a field goal on their second and fifth possessions. Missed a field goal, punted once. Loss of about two yards, make it second down and 12 now for the Hoosiers. Well, back near the 27. And Dell to throw, this is a test. Pass is away, the pass is good. And the game is uh, relatively short, as Anthony Thompson is well covered. By throwing that ball, and when Bolliard was in and relieved for Snell, they threw that, that play twice. Are they conceding to Michigan that uh, Michigan has stopped Thompson, uh, the running back? I think so. What they've said, and last year he only gained 77 yards in uh, like 20 carries, so they have a history of not running well against Michigan. They knew that Michigan was going to shut him down, so they're trying to get him the football in another way. Third and five. Now Pump throws down the middle. Gets in front of the intended receiver, Tony Buford. Buford was open. Snell didn't get it to him. When, whenever you have a lower bad back or tailbone as Snell has had, you, you, you tend to tighten up a little bit. He needs to keep that loose, stretch it out, and if he's going to throw it at all, it's probably going to be short rather than overthrowing anybody. I thought you could tell there that he short-armed it, didn't he? Michigan number 40, George Colosar. All right, Bollard is in the front, and Colosar drops back for Michigan. Just starting the third quarter. Got a little room for Colasar as Boyer didn't get all of it. And John comes all the way back up to the 44-yard line. 31-yard punt by Boyer that time. So he didn't hit it very well. Uh, here's what Michigan has done when they have had the opportunity in the first half. Notice they scored the first time they had the ball. And then nothing after that. Of course, that fumble, had 13 plays and a fumble, that occurred on Indiana's one-yard line. So almost a touchdown, but Bowles is not doing good enough. Bowles and Horde open up behind Taylor. Bowles has it. Get a yard on the carry. Rolled back by Slareth and Harris. Indiana kicking game is very good. That last punt might not indicate that to you, but that's the poorest punt Bollier's had in some time. But their kicking game is very good. Well, Bollier only had four punts, 14 punts coming in, and if he had enough to qualify, he'd be ranked in the top five nationally. Came in averaging 45. So it's second down and nine. Taylor options down the line to Bowles, and Tony Bowles will move it up. To about the 48 before Brian DeWitts and Mark Ferry bring him down. Joe Hug 
6'1", 225. He only weighed 205 when he came to Indiana. And his mother had to be the liaison between he and Mallory. He said, listen, if you don't take my son as a walk-on, I'm going to send him to Ohio State. Mallory said, send him up. He earned a letter his first year as a walk-on. A lot of hustle, a lot of speed. He's smart now. Well, that's a long five. Taylor puts it up deep. Oh, my goodness, McMurtry hauls it in at number 30, what is it, 38 got lost on the play. Mike Dumas, the cornerback, absolutely got lost on the play. He was the man that was the closest to the ball. Andre Hall was back there, too. They sort of gave up on it, it seemed, and uh, McMurtry just kept going after it and got it. Well, the protection was fine, as you saw. This is an excellent throw. His foot is on the line, it looks like. You can run that back just a little bit. It looks, it looks like his foot is on the line. All you need is one foot inbounds, not on the line. We're not going to see it from that angle either. All right, this is uh, the big fullback, Horde. And Leroy Horde hammers down to the 15. Let's take another look. One foot inbounds is all you need. Now he has possession. He's on the line. He's on the line. Official is right there. Should have called it. And One looking at his feet. Well, it's tough. It's tough when you have one official there. You got to look at the catch to make sure he has possession, and you have to see his feet. Normally, if there's two, they'll be trained. One will take the catch, and one will take the feet. That time it was a mistake. Something else to argue about. But it's first down. Michigan at the Indiana 15. This is goes for the 13. Jim Sams on the tackle, number 91 for Indiana. Sams uh, that time was going against uh, John Vitale, the All Big Ten center for the University of Michigan, and did a nice job of getting by him. So Michigan gets a big break on that pass reception. Leading seven to six. Second down from the 13. Bowles again. Inside the 10, down to the eight. He's got some power. He weighs 190 pounds. He just put his head down and went after it that time and got pretty good gain out of it as he hammered Willie Bates. Michigan has big offensive linemen, but they also pull. Watch 73 and 78. Dingman is 78. 73 is Doring. Watch him as both of them get out of there, get their bodies around. Walker, number 89, gets a nice block at tight end. I don't see big men moving. Uh, really kind of dancing on their toes anyway. Taylor looks to throw it. Now takes off. Brad Money and Terry Saunders with the pursuit. Just good defense. Uh, keep nine seniors in that uh, defensive uh, setup for Indiana. They've seen it all before. A lot of them have started for two years, three years. Some of them for four years they've started. It's a very veteran, experienced ball club. All right. David Weil will snap it. Ken Solom will hold it. And Mike Gillette will kick it. And he'll kick it from the 15. 25 yarder is good. And the Wolverines now move it out to a 10 to 6 lead with 10 2 to go in the third quarter. That's the home of one of the outstanding law schools in the nation. Law Quad here at the University of Michigan. A lot of heavy hitters occupying those premises. <laughs> All right, we pull back into Michigan Stadium with 106,104 watching today. And Mike Gillette will kick it off for the Wolverines as they lead 10 to 6. Daryl Edding, Rob Turner. 
And Markel Granderson ought to beat people. Back a yard deep in the end zone. It's Granderson. And he's coming. And he made a mistake. He is buried at the 14. Indiana had a return set up to the left side of the field, and the ball was kicked all the way over away from the return. He couldn't get over there, so he did the only thing he could, and that just take it upfield and get as much as you can. Should have left it alone if you had it on the 20. Try to tell an 18-year-old kid that. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Absolutely right. And we never want to forget it, either, because sure. they are 18, 19, 20-year-old players. Dave Snell is out there at quarterback. It's just Anthony Thompson running to the boundary side. And gets four or five yards out of it. And Eric Anderson brings him down. UCLA in the third quarter not having it so easy in Tucson against Arizona. Well, Notre Dame won rather handily. And Miami is out big at halftime over Cincinnati. I would imagine a little angry. Nebraska continues to roll up points. And so does West Virginia. Second down and six. And it's the Thompson, and Thompson loses a couple of yards as T.J. Austin, the middle guard, got instant penetration. On him down. They don't let him bring signs into Michigan Stadium. Well, they were. <laughs> Michigan State beating Illinois 28-21 today, and Francis Bay got a win for the Northwestern Wildcats. It is third down and about seven. Big upset in Kentucky beating Georgia. Well back. Gets it away and overthrows his man. Bob Turner, the intended receiver, into the ball game. We haven't heard much of this 106,000 since that opening possession. Well, Michigan hadn't done anything since that opening possession. They fumbled on the one-yard line. They took their first possession of the second half and moved down and got a field goal. Indiana in two possessions has done nothing to punch. All your last one was 31 yards. Moving around, finding some room, picking his way, and winds up at the Indiana 46. Seven yard return after a 36 yard punt, and 8.55 to go in the third quarter. I just talked to Dr. John McCarroll of Indiana. He says that quarterback Dave Schnell is still very sore in his guitar out there. His mobility is somewhat limited. Dr. McCarroll says they'll leave him in, but they're just not sure how well he'll be able to move. Keith. All right, Becky, thanks very much. The ball is at the 47 of Indiana. It's the first time in the ball game that Michigan has started a possession on the Indiana side of the field. They lead 10 to 6. Here comes the reverse. McMurtry is going to set up and throw. And Callaway is wide.
number one draft choice in baseball by the Red Sox a couple years ago, but wanted to come to school to get an education. Can also throw the football. Callaway makes the catch. Play only took nine seconds, and Indiana now has a problem. And his Michigan kicking off, leading now 17 to 6 with 8.45 to go in the third quarter. And this time, Rob Turner, a yard deep in the end zone, puts his knee down, and they'll take it up on the 20. Take a look at the end of this play now. Callaway is waiting for the ball. DeWitt's number 13 seems to go a little bit late. You know, he should have gone up with both hands to try to block the vision, or at least knock the ball down, or if anything else, foul him intentionally with the foul in college. It goes back 15 yards 15 from the line yards. of scrimmage. That it got him for face guarding, probably. But you, well, no, there's no rule in college face guarding. You put right. two hands up and do anything you want. But, uh, you know, he should have fouled him or something, but he just swatted at it with one hand. Foul would have been the better decision there, surely. Anyway, the Hoosiers now trailing by 11. They start at the 20, and here comes Thompson in the middle, and two yards at the most. Well, Michigan's red hot right now. The crowd's back in the ball game, and Mark Messner and John Milligan get that tackle. Well, Messner came into the fray today uh, very active, and he's getting around Fryer, number 79. You know, the Miami coaches when they played up here a little bit earlier in the year said this man right here is relentless. He just never stops. He's always motion, always moving. Second down, eight. Well, under pressure goes down. Sack back at the 11 by Messner. Mesner is the career leader in, in sacks and tackles for losses at the University of Michigan. Michigan. This time just fights. That description was good, relentless. He just doesn't want to stop. And the coverage was good downfield that made uh, Snell look twice, and that was enough time for Mesner to get in there. The Hoosiers struggling right now at seven and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. Ball is back near the 11. They've got to go to the 30 to get a first down. Again, this time it was Alex Marshall coming from the outside. It's a very poor series for, for Indiana. And a great series for uh, Michigan. Bolliard now is going to have to punt the ball from the back line of his end zone. Michigan has been able to put some heat on him a couple of times today. You know they're going to go after him here. It's a pretty good kick out of there. Polisar back at the 47. Over the 35 and down at the 34. 46 yard punt and a 13 yard return. And the Wolverines right now are red hot. The numbers right there clearly define what has happened here in this third quarter. Michigan leading 17 to 6. They own the ball first down at the Indiana 34, and they're threatening to blow the game open. Ord and Bold behind Taylor. It's Ord. Just about the line of scrimmage. The quality of the opposition has always been. A very good measure of the quality of a team. That right there, I think, tells you something. Coming in, Indiana had played six teams. None of them had had winning records to this point, whereas Michigan lost to Notre Dame by two, lost to Miami by one, and tied Iowa. You know, by three points, they've lost two and tied one. So they've played a couple of points by far. Taylor back on second and nine to the sideline. To McMurtry and right at the 25 out of bounds a yard short of the first down where is 
Michigan rushing the football. Mostly up the middle and to the right side. They don't run left very often. And they have shut down Indiana's running game. Wishbone now on third and one. With two fullbacks, Hunt joining Hoard and Bowles. Go to the up man, Bunch, the big guy, 240 pounds, and he has the first down at about the Indiana 23. Bo Schembechler said the pressure is on us. Since we have that tie in the conference play, we need to win this ball game. Conceivably, Indiana could lose this game and still win the Big Ten title. Callaway in motion. Taylor back. Looks at Callaway. Hits him in the middle. Callaway is down to the two. Well, he got lost out there in the secondary, didn't he? He did, and he's right here. Callaway just going to go in motion and just come down here and hook. The wide receiver's going to go to the outside, and the linebackers are going to drop all around him, and it's just going to be a zone coverage. And the ball is right there, and he's just going to do something with it after he gets it. Now he's got one-on-one -on -one to get to the end zone. DeWitt misses, and he gets down to the, about the two-yard line. Well, it's going to be officially the one closer there, and this is Horrid touchdown. Second of the day. in the world and horses have come from all over the world to participate live 2:30 Eastern 1:30 Central and Pacific and then you will have the McDonald's open from Madrid Spain the Boston Celtics against Real Madrid see how the Celts do against some European competition and it's a very in the view of Commissioner David Stern of the NBA a very significant uh, tournament being played in Spain and it could well be it'll change the face of international basketball too because our, our guys have been going over there for a good long time now playing with various teams Gillette will kick it off with Eddings Turner and Granderson back and Turner's the man in the middle they don't like him to get it but now leading 24 to 6 they'll kick it right to him and they'll kick it to deep Gillette with that powerful leg gives him no chance to return the ball here's Becky Dixon Keith, a familiar sight along the sidelines of any football game is drinking water. But here at Michigan, you won't find just plain ordinary water. No, the Wolverines drink designer water. Now, this you might expect to see out on the coast, USC or UCLA. But bottled water right in the heart of the Big Ten? Keith, you know, there are some people who say that real men don't eat quiche, but the Wolverines are living proof that they do drink designer water. And today, it seems to be working. Designer water? <laughs> I guess. Becky moves to Beverly Hills and she's calling it designer water. <laughs> First down. The way they're playing in the third quarter, we ought to test that water. Pass is low, intended for Cal Miller. 
Well, there's no question that his back has got to be bothering me. It was a simple short pattern to a man that was wide open and he threw it low. Doesn't look good for Indiana being down 18 points uh, late in the third quarter and your quarterback has a bad back. Michigan is on fire right now. Everything going their way and they're making things happen. Indiana they just need some first downs to slow this momentum that Michigan has coming out the second half. Nestor's after him. Snell's pass again low, but picked up this time by Anthony Thompson. But he can only get four yards. Fierce pursuit now for the Michigan defenders. UCLA is now 17 nothing over Arizona in the third quarter at Tucson. Bruins going into the game ranked number one. Terry Donahue is not about to get into conversation about that. He's walking around on eggshells. <laughs> Last time they were ranked number one, they went to Tucson and got beat. They weren't number one very long, were they? No. It is third and seven. a wicked hit from number 88 Brent White gets up and walks away and he just had to dump the pass to keep from taking the sack and a big loss you know Mesner right here number 60 for Michigan is just causing all kinds of problems for uh, Indiana he's come out the second half and just playing great fights off the, the Friar number 79 chases him out of the pocket and that's another punt coming up and Bolliard in his last two has kicked well he's kicked 31 36 and his last one was 46 and he got all of this one. good high hanging punt goes back to Colasar who gets away from two Hoosiers and brings it back near the 40 that was a 45 yard punt we're down to 436 now in the third quarter and Michigan jumping out here in this third quarter with an explosion 24 to 6. The Honda Scholar Athlete of the Week, sponsored by Honda, and the award goes to Mark Tingstad this week, a senior linebacker from Arizona State. He had 21 tackles, two sacks, and an interception in the loss last week to Stanford. His grade point is 3.48 in accounting, and Honda will present a check for $2,000 to the General Scholarship Fund of Arizona State University in Tingstad's name. Congratulations, Mark. On first down, they give it to Jared Bunch. And the big man hammers his way out to a, near the 47-yard line. They're going to give it to the big guy now. Let him beat on him for a while. Right here at 419 to go in the third quarter. Let's pause five seconds for our local station's identity. WPDE TV 15, Florence Myrtle Beach. Second down, three for Michigan. Here they're on 47. And this is Tony Bowles to get the first down as he crosses midfield. Michigan scored in their opening possession, then fumbled an opportunity away at the Indiana one. Indiana had two field goals in the first half, and it was 7 6 at halftime. The Wolverines have come out and exploded in the second half, running up 24 points, and they've had field position through the entire possession time of this second half. And that makes a big difference. They have it right now, first down at the Indiana 49. Illinois lost today to Michigan State, 28-21. And Horde caught from behind and brought down by Joe Huff. Uh, excuse me, Jared Bunch it is, 32. Well, 35 got 32. up right here number 35 he's just going to slip inside of 73 Dorian. and if the offense can't make something happen for indiana then the defense will have to up gets in there and makes a nice play but field position as you mentioned and that graphic just showed you has been all in michigan's favor the second half they've got three wide outs now on second down and 12. taylor's going to put it up he's had a pretty good day shoot one down the middle tight end Derek walker first down Across the 40, fumble, and Indiana's got the ball. Son 
Sanders comes out of there. Terry was one of those involved in the fight as the tight end had it. As he went down, they stripped it away from him. And so the Hoosier defense forces a turnover. Taylor again puts the ball right on the money. With good protection, Huzar is 74. Vital is there. Walker, number 89. As to whether his knee hit before the ball came out, but it's a he big turnover. It. Yeah, it's a big turnover for Indiana. It. If it did hit, it balances out because uh, earlier uh, the call, one of the calls went for Michigan on that sideline play. Tom Bollard is now in at quarterback. Dell is just two center and two stiff, apparently. So Bollard is in there at quarterback now for Indiana. And that ball is almost intercepted by J.J. Grant. He has not, Bollard has not yet really hummed the ball with authority. He's one for six for eight yards, and he's been sort of pushing it. He came in only having thrown nine. Let's just go back and take a look. If the, the knee is down before the ball is out. Well, now the ball is in his arms, clearly, right? The knee is clearly down. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what else you need. Yeah. With the ball, his knee was down before the ball came out. Tough call for the official to pick sure. Yeah, very good. I would not quibble about that. Second down and ten. Pitch it outside. Thompson's got it. Got some help on the corner, and he's going to have a first down for the Hoosiers at the Michigan 49. So a little option action opens it up for him. and take a look what the official was looking at how fast it happened <laughs> oh, sure so quick you can't yeah. quibble about that yeah. kind of thing. Hey, we yeah, roll, we roll, sure. let's go. i think this this is a good move by mallory in putting bollard into the ball game that's you, 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 you went three series with snell in the second half he's not done anything he's going short get your other quarterback in maybe you can bring you back that's their first first down of the second half Thompson hit behind the line of scrimmage by number 60 mark mester Oh, he's certainly come alive here in the third quarter. He has started playing in the second half. Look at number 60, the left side of your screen. 64 is Radke. He goes right inside of Radke, who is uh, one of their best players on the offensive line. Gets in the backfield, and it's a two- or three-yard loss. Not all that big. He sure is determined. He's quick. Never good Second down and 14. Bollard finally gets rid of it to uh, Anthony Thompson, but by then, Anthony is warmed by the maize and blue. Michigan doesn't do a lot of things defensively that could give you any cheap plays, any easy touchdowns. They usually play seven or eight men deep in zone coverage, and if they can get a pass rush from their front three, especially with Mesner, then they've got the best of both worlds. Right. They now literally have you outnumbered, don't they? Little, Mister, yeah. Getting loose up there. They're a little fit in that defensive line, too, with the injury to John Herman. He's out for the year, and also his backup, Manuel. It is third and eight. All your pass is going to be intercepted. There is a penalty flag back where the ball was thrown, and Beta Murray has picked it off. Actually, all Beta had to do was stand there and catch it. And he was thrown right to it. Indiana called for holding. They'll refuse it. Let's take, let's take a look. Take a look right here. Mesner is right here. He's going to come in. But watch Radke, number 64. He's going to help on uh, Mesner. He knows that Mesner is, you guys can watch him stick his hand out there, pulling down the official. The umpire right there makes the call. And uh, Murray sees it all the way. It's an easy interception. And Murray is still down with that tackle from the back. He got belted pretty well. I think it was Rob Turner that hit him. And uh, Beta Murray, with four interceptions, is still on the field. Timeout for him at 51 seconds to go in the third quarter. Murray was an outstanding uh, defensive back in high school. Had a, just a bunch of interceptions. Did not play at Michigan last year because he was a prop 48. Take a look at the end of the play. Looks like his foot may have gotten caught underneath him. Came down on the ball may, and that thing is hard. Yeah. Hopefully that's all it is. We got the wind knocked out of it. Oh, it 
looks like it's a quick. Yeah, I, I think he got his foot caught up underneath him when he fell. He didn't know there was someone behind him. He has four interceptions. This is his first year playing. He's a freshman last year at Michigan, did not play. This is his first opportunity to play this year, and he's done an outstanding job for Michigan. Second half of possessions for Indiana. No field position. Yeah, but that starting uh, point of possession, starting point, has been limited, and then add in some sacks on top of it. Much less. This is Leroy Horde carrying the ball. And uh, let's check in with Becky now to find out what the late word is on Dave Schnell. Well, Keith, word is that he was not taken out of the ball game because of medical reasons. The coach just, just feel he's too hampered with that injury. Not very effective, not very mobile. Okay. wins championships and his defense leads the Big Ten. came into this game averaging right at 161 yards per game. Today he's carried 16 times and picked up 54 yards. And in last year's game against Michigan he had 74 yards, 77 yards. So uh, Michigan can shut down a good runner. And uh, you know, Mark, uh, uh, this is the first game that Indiana has really played anybody with a winning record. I think they're finding out something about their team today. This is Bowles. Four yards. It's going to be up to Indiana now to make a big play defensively. Otherwise, the Wolverines are just going to beat on them and just crunch the ball down the field. Yeah, their defense got a turnover the last time they were on the field, and they're uh, all doing anything with it. They need something defensively, some big plays, some turnovers to get some field position for their offense. Oregon out ahead of Washington in the fourth quarter, 10 to 7. I think it could be a dangerous stop for the Huskies in UG. their all-out effort last week in Southern California where they lost by a point. Pull back. Oh, look at big old Leroy Horn. He's off to the races again. Going, going. Touchdown. Yeah. 
the middle. Vital, Huzar, Dingman, Trepanek, and Doring all get their men out of the way. A horn just outruns the defensive secondary. His second long run of the day. these two. Bill Mallory had three sons. Two of them have graduated from Michigan. The third one, Kurt, is a redshirt freshman at the University of Michigan. And Douglas, who is a graduate assistant now with uh, Mallory at Indiana, was the defensive captain last year for Michigan under Bo Schembechler and helped uh, Snell get ready for this ball game. Turner at the seventh. penalty. Hoosier's getting a little frustrated now. Yeah. Nothing has gone right for him. In the third quarter, since the whole whole half. And it's a clip call against him. And here's Becky. Keith, I just talked to the Michigan doctors, and they say free safety Veda Murray has a, injured his right leg. They think it is a sprained ligament in his right knee. He probably will not return to today's game right now. As you can see, he's sitting on the sidelines with ice on that knee, a very disappointed young man. Sprained ligaments are tough fellows to heal, too. The only thing you can do is stay off of them. I usually put him in a cast. He's immobilized for a while. And here's Bolliard coming out. Indiana now will have Iowa at home next week. Then they have to go to Champaign to play Illinois and then finish off with Michigan State. And then a trip to Purdue. Tough part of their schedule here today and the rest of the season. First down from the 18. Bolliard passes away good to Buford. And Buford is out of bounds across the 30 at the 31. The Michigan Wolverines aren't exactly out of the woods themselves as far as uh, the schedule is concerned. They have played a 10 10 tie with Iowa. They are playing Northwestern next week, Minnesota. Then they finish the season with Illinois at home and then travel to Columbus against Ohio State. You would say that they would have the inside track yeah, looking at their. Yeah. yeah, they got the easier part of their schedule ahead of them, and they would be leading the Big Ten by a half a game after this game if they should win. Give it to Anthony Thompson, and Thompson straight ahead. The one thing that uh, Indiana has not been able to do, they have not blown, the offensive front has not blown Michigan off the ball today. No, they haven't. We didn't, uh, we didn't, uh, that was no surprise. We didn't anticipate them no. doing that. Michigan can shut down a good running game, and you have to be able to throw, and uh, again, defense is going to win your championships. Second down and eight. Bollard steps away from the pressure. Let's it go. Buford can't pull it in. Tony was being rattled around as the ball came to him, and he couldn't hold it. The moon is out. Halloween can't be far behind. came back to beat Mandy. Tennessee broke the drought. Johnny Major's got to be breathing a sigh of relief. Oregon State. I'll tell you what, that Wilhelm is having a pretty good season for those beaters. A left-handed quarterback. So Bolliard calls a timeout. Wants to talk. Third down and eight coming up. Demetrius Brown, number seven, warming up on the sidelines. He might get a little playing time before this game is over. It never hurts to let that backup have some snaps. A 31 to six ball game. Michigan now in command. Indiana third down and eight from their 33. Tom 
from Bollard out of the shotgun formation. Gets his pass off. Good to Anthony Thompson. He's got to get past the marker, and he does for a first down. The Hoosiers need a couple of big, big happenings. And their defense on that last series looked tired. They looked whipped because uh, Ford just ran through three people in the defensive secondary on the way to his 54 yard touchdown. Thompson slowed down in the backfield and then 95. J.J. Grant is there to bring him down and here's Becky. Thank you very much, Keith. Earlier you talked about the alumni band. We saw them and with me right now is a very celebrated member of that band. He is Mr. Tom Roach and who happens to be a regent here at the University of Michigan and also is the cover story this weekend at homecoming. Tom, let's go back to 1948 to 1950, your days here at Michigan. What's your favorite homecoming memory? I think it was all of the homecoming displays, the homecoming parade, and coming down. We didn't have an alumni band then, but coming down with all of the alumni back from all over the country. It's a very exciting day. What's the differ biggest difference marching today than 40 years ago? Well, the style hasn't changed that much, but this drum seems to get heavier, and it hits my leg harder every year. But you're not any slower. You can beat it just as that. I keep up. Right. I keep up. <laughs> Thank you. I bet you do. Keith. <laughs> I keep up. I like it. Whistle and a penalty against Indiana before the snap of the ball. Illegal procedure. Can be any number of things. Oftentimes, six men on the line of scrimmage. Yeah. Uh, second down and 14. But the Wolverines been impressive the way they took command in the second half. A lot of Big Ten coaches remaining on their schedule that'll have their attention after this explosion. Back goes Bollier. Throws underneath. Not much on the play as Carlos Marte, the tight end, makes the catch. The Big Ten has been a little bit off this year. I mean, they have not had the uh, good uh, non-conference record, and there's a. Uh, I think there's one team that, that may be uh, sneaking up on some people, and that is Michigan. Michigan lost early to uh, Notre Dame, lost early to Miami, and they started off 0-2. But if they would have scored uh, three or four more points, they would could have won both of those ball games and been right the top six. And near the top, if they would have won both those, they could have been ranked number one. So uh, Michigan is a, is a force to be dealt with in the Big Ten title race. On third and 12, ball, you've got to throw it. Deep sideline, Turner. Rob Turner's had a good day. He had some big catches in the first half, and he hauls in a big one right there and gives Indiana a first down on the Michigan side of the field. UCLA now putting Arizona away in the fourth quarter, leading 24 to nothing. It's a big win for the number one team uh, on the road. Lloyd Lloyd Carr the defensive coordinator for the University of Michigan has done an outstanding job today shutting out uh, the Hoosiers so no touchdowns anyway a couple of field goals from the Indiana 42 uh, from the Michigan 42 the ball is rolling around on the field nobody sees it and finally in Michigan man punches on it there were two Indiana people there looking for it as Cal Miller lost it and they didn't see it Roll right between the legs of one, and Michigan recovers the pump. And you've got a lot of Indiana Hoosiers standing around. They, you know, it's got to be a big disappointment for Indiana as we take a look at the Harris going on. 31 to 6, the score. This Troy Aikman is having a great day. This is his third touchdown pass of the afternoon, a 56-yard effort to Corwin Anthony, and the Bruins lead Arizona 24 to nothing in the fourth. Uh, Mark's happier here in the second half than he was the first. Let me show you what they're doing. We talked about them slanting. He's going to slant between the center and the guard. And let's show you what happens when he slants between. We said they were going to try and stop the running game of Indiana by slanting. Well, he gets between him. He doesn't know which one has the ball. Knocks it loose. Let's Bollard go and then tries to. What a great uh, half 
he's played in the third Go back there, and the monk's going to sort him out. This caused the destruction. Jared Monk, 240-pounder, junior, playing with a sore shoulder, but he's had a pretty good day, and he's done some power running all right. Alan Jefferson now checks into the backfield for Michigan, number 28, at tailback. This is another running back that Bowen still said is going to be a great player. Well, they have three outstanding tailbacks. All of them are sophomores. Tracy Williams, Bowles, and Alan Jefferson. Another junior. Sophom sophomore. There's your bunch again. Oh, he looks strong today. He had a very strong shoulder. Certainly has shaken it off. That'll be another Michigan first down. And the Indiana defense now, very tired. They have been on the field most of the second half. Yeah, those tailbacks are sophomores eligibility-wise. Juniors academic. Good solid hit by Joe Huff on Allen Jefferson. Just about the line of scrimmage is where they'll put him down. There's been one player for Indiana that has really had an outstanding game defensively. It's this man right here, Joe Huff, number 35. That is the way to do it right there. I now remember why I'm confused because we haven't listed as juniors because Bo lists them all as juniors. Yes, he does. According to their academic posture. Yep. Does that mean he won't let them play if they're eligible for a <laughs> year? Uh, <laughs> Second down and just a little more than 10. And Michael Taylor drops. Takes off. And penalty flags as he is rolled down around the 36. Jim Sam brought him down. This is a clip against the Wolverines. with a hat on there just walk behind the uh, side of the booth is Doug Mallory who played as a strong safety a captain for Michigan last year and is working as a graduate assistant at Indiana this year his uh, other brother used to be a graduate assistant at Indiana is Mike and he's now I think a, an assistant coach at Kent State University time remaining in the ball game is 8 3 Michigan has the ship sailing smoothly, leading 31 to 6. The clipping penalty moves the ball all the way back to their own 43. They've got to go down inside the Indiana 33 for the first down. On second down, Michael Taylor to throw the ball. Does caught by Brown, the tight end at midfield. Uh, Walker, rather, the tight end. Eric Walker. 6-2, but all of those tight ends are big people. Brown weighs 250, Walker weighs 245, Dybold weighs 250, Keith Mitchell 230. And a bunch of tackles running around out there. They are big, aren't they? Well, the midfield, third down. McMurtry can't run it down. Too far. Way over his head. And that'll bring up fourth down. You know, you might question uh, Michigan throwing, being ahead 31 to 6, but uh, running is what they do best. I mean, if they want to run the score up, they would run. But uh, I don't think there's any problem with it. I think these two coaches are good enough friends to realize that, uh, you know, you're, you're playing now for next week. This game is already won. And Michigan can show other teams that they can throw the ball deep. That's what they're trying to do. Gillette will hit this one from around his own 40. Buford's back up. Standing at his 12 now. Come up 
to the 20 of the dead run ticket. He elects to stay inbound and works his way up to about the 32 yard line. At 6.45 to go in a game that's going to be won apparently by Mr. The sun's going down. A lot of color there. And the moon is up. And it's Indiana's ball first down at their own 31. Boyard getting a lot of work on his throw in now. Hits Buford at midfield. He's starting to throw the ball now with accuracy and some authority. When he first came in in relief of Schnell when Dave was injured, suffered the bruised tailbone. He was very tentative. I think you can see in how well he can throw it, too. Of course, there's no pressure on him now. The game is uh, all but over, and he's just out there getting some, some reps. He's seven for 14 and 82 yards. Just go midfield, first down for the Hoosiers. It a little bit behind Anthony Thompson, and there's a penalty flag in the melee around the quarterback, and it could very well be, you know, it's going to be a face mask, and the face mask call goes against Indiana. So in trying to ward off the persistent Messner and company, one of the Hoosier defenders or protectors of the quarterback, grabbed the face mask. Face mask, offense, repeat first down. And back comes the marker. Way back inside the 36. Indiana brings the ball back to the 36. 15 yards. Whew, that hurts. Indiana had not won a ball game here in this stadium since 1967. Oh, another year's going to go by. On first and 25, Rob Turner makes the catch. He gets back to about the 47 before he is brought down. Bill Mallory now is going to have to go home and. Hope he can heal his quarterback and regroup. Regroup, but uh, don't, he shouldn't feel like a, a lone ranger. There are not many teams that have beaten Bo Schembechler. In the 20 years that Schembechler has been here, he's lost only eight Big Ten home games. That's quite a record. It would not appear there will be any particular movement in the top 10. The rankings this week. Ball your pass again, thrown to the sidelines. Anthony Thompson gets it and goes out of bounds. He's going to be short of his first down, so it'll bring up third. West Virginia club, they seem to rise up against old foes and let them have it. D.C. a licking today. Michigan State up ending Illinois with Iowa beating Purdue. Things are starting to sort out. You know, you talk about Mallory. He has won everywhere he has gone. He was at Colorado and, and won. He was at Northern Illinois. He has turned this program around. And, uh, the last coach to take a uh, team from the Big Eight to the Orange Bowl, other than Nebraska or Oklahoma, uh, Oklahoma. On third and seven, throws it under to Thompson, and Thompson fights his way for what appears to be a first down very close to it. Well, Anthony Thompson still got the fight, even though uh, his team was sort of overrun by a herd of Wolverines in that third quarter. It's, it's frustrating too for these Hoosiers. They feel like last year they didn't get any respect when they beat Indiana, when they beat Ohio State and Michigan in the same year for the first time uh, in a long, long time. They felt like Bo came back here and says, "Well, we didn't play well. I mean, it was our fault. We this, we didn't that." And they felt like the Hoosiers felt like they didn't get any respect. Well, that's just the way Bo is. Uh, but, uh, they were looking for some respect when they came up here. A tough run by Anthony Thompson right there. 
But this is not going to decide the uh, Big Ten Championship. Uh, it, it will go a long way towards it, but Michigan still has to go the rest of the season, four games, and not lose a ball game or tie one. And uh, if they can do that, th their destiny is in their own hands. I think you can tell by uh, when Bo takes off his headset, it's kind of like Red Auerbach lighting a cigar. That's <laughs> true. the Miami game when he got a grin on his face he hadn't taken off his headset and Miami cut loose with that piece of lot of points to beat him 31 to 30. Well, he's been 20 years at, at Michigan he's the winningest active division one coach and he's fifth all time. Well he's also the athletic director and he's going to get into that in time and uh, one of the things he's going to have to consider is a recent proposal and apparently it was stimulated by Frank Burroughs at Arkansas that a 12th game be added to the college team schedule. Here's a pass for Buford, overthrown and out of bounds. And I think I think it is worth hearing what Bo Schimbeckler's reaction is to the proposal for adding a 12th game to the collegiate schedule. This is what he told me. The only reservation I have, you know, there's a, there comes a point where we just can't continually tax these youngsters who are uh, trying to pursue a degree and to play football at the same time. When I first started coaching, we played nine games. The athletic departments got in financial difficulty, we went to 10. Uh, once again, years later, they got in financial difficulty, we went to 11. Now everybody's in financial difficulty again, are we gonna go to 12? Uh, somewhere along the line, we've got to uh, draw the line. Bolliard running the ball for Indiana is caught before he can get out of bounds and pull down by Mark Spencer, who shows up at the linebacker position for the Wolverine. Both sound a lot like George C. Scott. I mean, made a lot of sense to what he was saying also. Disciplinarian, a very tough coach. He has uh, done an outstanding job with his program. You know, he, he gets boys and makes men out of them. And I think that's the same kind of program that Bill Mallory has on the other side of the field. Very good disciplinarian. and. Uh, has the whole picture in mind. Fourth down and four. All you're getting good protection, throws, and it is incomplete. And the ball will go over to the Michigan Wolverine. Anthony Thompson trying to pull it in in front of Tim Williams and couldn't do it. So at 2.53 to play, this one seems in hand. One of the scores that you saw a little while ago involved the Wyoming Cowboys as they rolled up some points today. They have the longest regular season winning streak right now. The Wyoming has won 17 in a row. And Randy Weldiak today threw for three touchdowns and ran for another, and they won 61 to 18. The Detroit crowd is now in at quarterback for Michigan as they take over from their 27. And he hands the ball to Allen Jefferson. He just runs it off the right side and gets the clock going. And at this point of the game, there is very little reason for the Hoosiers to be spending their time out because this issue is resolved. Tracy Williams is in. It was Tracy who had the bad luck last week to fumble the ball on the Iowa one. And they had to settle for a 10-10 tie. Brown gives it to Williams. A little confidence building here. He runs in heavy traffic. The MVPs for Chevrolet coming up in a moment. Chevrolet donating a thousand dollar scholarship and the name of each of the players to their respective universities and we'll announce that at the conclusion of the ball game as we move inside two minutes to play. So Indiana getting roughed up today goes home to play a rough customer next week the Iowa Hawkeyes. They were winners today over Purdue. Illinois went down so that leaves Michigan in pretty good shape as Brown whips one and it's caught by Tracy Williams. And he's across midfield to the Indiana 48-yard line. Crowd of 106,104 watching at homecoming weekend and the penalty flag thrown on the flag. 
I don't have any problem with this at all. Uh, Michigan's up 31 to 6. Demetrius Brown, the backup quarterback, is in, and you're throwing the football. And I, I, that's fine. If, if something should happen to Taylor where he goes down, your backups have to be ready to play. And I think the coaches on the other side of the field understand that, especially these two. Good friends, and uh, as Bo told us, you know, we even made vacation together in the offseason. Well, there's always <clears throat> some squawking, you know, when it, there's any hint of somebody running up the score. But at the same time, as Bob says, you must prepare your own people. On first down, Brown gives it away to Chris Horn, who's now in at fullback. He's a junior from Huntsville, Alabama. Picks up short yardage on the play. We are now at a minute to go in the ball game. Well, we've run down most of the scores. We had Al Troutwig in Hawaii a week early. <laughs> he probably Let's hope he has a nice trip was. next week. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we won't let him go now. Ball carried by Alan Jefferson. Swarmed is Alan Jefferson carrying the ball and rolled down short of the line of scrimmage, but no big deal. It's a seasoning process now as uh, we look at the Big Ten standings. After today's action, Michigan on top. Iowa has two ties, Michigan only one. Indiana now and Illinois and Michigan State all have one loss. This will be the final snap of the ball game.